<clears throat> uh, hello and welcome to Melville House, everyone. I'm Dennis Johnson, the publisher of Melville House, along with my wife, Valerie Marians. And I'm here today with John Gennar, who until uh, just about a month ago was the mayor of Reykjavik, Iceland, which uh, might make you think he was a politician, uh, but that's not the case. He's a comedian, actor, writer, punk rocker, TV star, and a lot of other things. Uh, that don't normally add up to mayor. Um, he is, in fact, a man who has said that the only time he'd ever been in City Hall previously was when he was walking by and one of his children had to go to the bathroom urgently. Uh, but when Iceland's economy collapsed in 2008 and people took to the streets in somewhat violent protest, uh, the famous pots and pans revolution, uh, uh, young Gunnar said, don't do that, my friends. Let's run for office instead. Uh, and it seemed kind of hilarious, I guess, at the time to, to you and your fans. Um, and so off they went to form a political party called the Best Party and to run a joke campaign that included promising to let loose the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park into downtown Reykjavik, uh, to have a drug-free parliament by 2020, and to break all of his campaign promises. Uh, the process continued to seem hilarious to Jan Gunnar and his cohorts right up to the point where they won the election. <laughs> that was four years ago. Jan Gunnar was, by all accounts, a very successful mayor, moving the city out from under the threat of bankruptcy and experiencing such a rise in popularity that polls showed he would have been easily re-elected had he chosen to run again. Instead, however, he's on tour to talk about a book he's written that discusses not only his unorthodox campaign and his time in office, uh, but his thoughts about forming new political parties and reforming democracy. Uh, the book is Gnar, How I Became the Mayor of a Large City in Iceland and Changed the World. Here, we, you might notice that we have it around here. Uh, he's just off the red eye from Los Angeles where he's been doing press appearances and speaking about democracy. Uh, uh, appearing on the Craig Ferguson show and other things. And he's off to England tomorrow, I think, to set things right there. Um, but we're happy to have him here today on his last American stop. stop. Jan Gunnar, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is an unusual kind of political book. Um, you not only discuss politics in depth, but you encourage participation and optimism. Mm -hmm. uh, you come from a tough background that doesn't sound necessarily conducive to having become uh, a politician, let alone an optimistic politician. Mm -hmm. Was there something about your childhood that led to this interest in politics at the same time that it got you interested in becoming a comedian? Well, uh, I come from a, a, a very political uh, family, uh, or at least, uh, Half of it was very political. Uh, uh, my father, uh, he was uh, uh, he was very political, but uh, my mother was not, and uh, and he he was uh, he was uh, he was uh, a dedicated uh, communist and supporter of the Soviet Union <laughs> and. Uh, favored Stalin, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and when he went on vacations, he went to Bulgaria, yeah. which was the, uh, the promised land uh, in his, his mind, and uh, he really liked to discuss politics, and my mother did not. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, I, uh, and, but that w probably worked as a repellent on me. Mm. On, uh, 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 I was not interested in politics at all. I found it, uh, found them uh, uh, boring and uninteresting. And uh, and uh, the politicians, uh, especially the guys that my 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 father favored, they rarely smiled. You know. Uh, Stalin and uh, Brezhnev and uh, uh, and and all these 
all these guys. They, they never smiled. They seemed so serious all the time. And uh, he, he had their portraits in the house, didn't he? Well, yes. My father was a member of some organization, like the Friends of the USSR. And so whenever they uh, made a new general secretary in the Communist Party, uh, my father got a framed photo of the new guy. Like a big, big framed photo portrait photo, and uh, and then uh, he would, uh, you know, and he was uh, he was touched by this, you know, it meant a lot to him, mm. and then he started talking with my mother, where should it hang? Where shall we hang this? And my mother, my mother said, this is not going to hang <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> uh, and then they would have this argument about where. Uh, where uh, Brezhnev should be, and, uh, <laughs> and they uh, 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 always ended up in the cellar, uh, where my father hanged them, hanged up the, his 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 framed photos, and they hung there. And uh, I have this vivid memory from when I was a teenager, when I had started smoking, and. Uh, uh, going down in the cellar, hanging in the cellar, smoking, and with Stalin and Brezhnev <laughs> and, and all them hanging, hanging there with me, you know, smoking, smoking with Lenin, and uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, but but uh, of course my father uh, 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 affected me uh, like a father does uh, in many ways and. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so when I when I when I became a teenager and I and I, and I discovered punk music, uh, what especially fascinated me with punk was was anarchism, mm -hmm. and uh, that seemed to be like uh, the positive alternative to all this seriousness, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, so I got uh, fascinated with with anarchism through 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 punk music. Uh, uh, punk music, I not so much the music. Uh, I can't say I really liked the music. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it was the attitude. Yeah, it was the more of the uh, the more of the movement and the philosophy of the movement, the idea behind mm. the 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 punk movement. Uh, and uh, I especially favored British uh, punk band Crush, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so-called anarcho-punk, and uh, with great emphasis on feminism, peace, and anarchy. Well, you have an interesting statement in the book. You say that anarchism and surrealism are two sides of the same coin for you. Mm -hmm. uh, surrealism, just like anarchism, means believing unconditionally in your dreams. Yes. Where did, how did surrealism get in, into the picture for you? Well, uh, that was something that I, I got very fascinated with. Uh, uh, it was something that just grabbed my attention when I saw it, uh, uh, visual. Uh, uh, when I saw uh, uh, discovered uh, uh, works by by artists like Salvador Dali and René Magritte and uh, and uh, and others and uh, and you know it was something very fascinating about this so uh, so uh, uh, I started uh, digging into uh, surrealism mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I found the, the, the Surrealist Manifesto by André Breton, and I read that, and I was really fascinated with the whole idea. Uh, and, uh, and, surreal, and, and, and surrealism, the surrealist movement, was also uh, uh, very, very political. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, in a way, the Surrealist Manifesto was an inspiration for the best party. Mm -hmm. There are guidelines in the, in the uh, manifesto how to make a best party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Very clear uh, uh, instructions. Yeah. And, well, but uh, before you got to that, you did, it took you a lot of other places. I yeah, mean, yeah, you yeah. Were, uh, you were, your first claim to fame was as a punk star, right? Jo Johnny Punk? Or what Johnny Punk. Johnny yeah. Punk. I, uh, uh, 
I mean, we're only 350,000 people. It only, only takes a haircut to make you a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, 